Good to have you join us on Sports Update on Trust TV. I'm Adeni Aji Shafe. The African game is really in here on air right now because uh, <laughs> it's getting so close. Uh, and a lot of uh, African teams are really trying to see how they can get down to Ghana for the 13th edition of African games coming up in Accra. And that's why we'll be looking at the first story that has to do with uh, Team Nigeria. Ten judokas who are right now being listed to represent Nigeria at 13 African games. African games, ten judokas to represent Nigeria at the games there. We look at the list of those 13 uh, uh, players who will be uh, fighting hard for Nigeria. Talking about the judokas, now we have France. Franka Audu for women, 52 kilograms, that's minus 52 kilograms, and 2021 African champion Eko Ewa in minus 63 kilograms, Amara Udeze, minus 57 kilograms, Adijad Aziz in the minus 78 kilograms, Sarah uh, Umar, my plus 78 kilograms, for men, Michael Abo, minus 60 kilograms, Ken Dea Remu in the minus 66, Taiwa Remu, minus 73, Ibrahim Abdullahi in minus 81 kilograms, and Damini Micha. In the minus 90 kilograms. The coach is going to be Oluwatun Yojo and Christy Aremu. They will be uh, going to Ghana to represent uh, uh, Nigeria in judo. Well, as it is right now, in the studio with me is Olawale Peters. We'll bring you updates in the world of sport. Good to have you. Good evening, Adeni. It's my pleasure to be back to the studio. Mm. Um, a good one. And this is um, a sport and uh, event that uh, the Nigeria contingent they needs to really work on to make sure that we get as much as um, possible good Melda because if you watch the last um, the last competition that was held in Morocco in 2019 a majority of the medal that we won we won it from the weightlifting from the wrestling and what have you but judo is not really where we really make our mark when it comes to this competition so it's an area that we should work on to make sure that we get added advantage to win as much as possible because at the end of the day they're going to um, count all the medals you won in all the competition to determine who won who came first second third and like i said on the morning show we should try as much as possible to beat our best record of second position that we had in 2019 edition of winning 127 on medal so i think the boys they have what it takes uh, they are young, but they still have the experience. Then the coach also is not, um, is not a first-timer. He's someone that has done it before, and he's someone that can still still do it. We are talking about Nigerian team. Uh, the, the judo has there about 10 of them ready to fight for Nigeria in this sport of judo. Ten, uh, five women and also five men in different categories of uh, kilograms there. Still talking about the African games. Well, Ghana is right now getting more agog because all the teams are beginning to uh, troop into Ghana, Accra precisely. We have 54 nations. We lock horns to see who wins this African Olympics, as we call it. Formerly called Pan-African Games, later to All-African Games, and now African Games. Nigeria uh, will be trying to see how they can at least uh, scoop this particular uh, medal stable this time around. We are going to be competing in 25 sports, 358 contingent. That's the athletes that will be going for Team Nigeria. See, talking about the competition, let's look at football side of it. African Games, Boso, Lister, Bamiye, Daga, Uwosu, 17 others as Flying Eagles jet out. Flying Eagles will be starting their match on Thursday, but that right now, they will be at least as we speak right now, they should be landing in Ghana. Now, let's look at the team of 20 players led by coach Ladan Bozo. Goalkeepers, we have uh, Nathaniel Umwosu, Clinton Ezekiel, Samuel James. Defenders, we have Daniel Bameyi, Ibrahim Abdullahi, Olada Akintola, Godwin Samson, Haruna Haliu, Rabiu Abdullahi. For the midfielders, we have Daniel Daga, Favor Uziogu, Awa Ibrahim, Yinka Olatujoe, Suleiman Idris, Y forwards are Kende Ibrahim, Charles Agada, Nasir Muhammad, Sunday Joseph, Olalekon Ibrahim, and you have Sadiq Isiaka. Well, they'll be playing, uh, the teams that will be playing in Group A will have Ghana, Congo, Benin Republic, and the Gambia. While in Group B will have Nigeria, Uganda, South Sudan, Senegal, and Tunisia. Those are the teams that will be playing uh, with, uh, in our group, Nigeria, Uganda, South Africa, South Sudan, Senegal, and Tunisia. Yeah, um, I think the, the team that we're playing against, they are not, um, they are not a threat to us. Mm. That's the truth. And we have uh, the boys that can do it. We have the boys that are hungry. We have the boys that they are young and they are athletics and they know what to do. And they are going with a coach that has vast experience when it comes to this particular competition. Uh, we will support them. We wish them the best. But um, the, the, the way the, the competition works, just like the Olympic, 
whatever happens, whatever medal will win, it will only count as mm. one medal. So that means we have about, so that's why a lot of people have been calling the organizer to look into this. When you have a, a, a players of about 22 competing for a competition, at the, end, at the end of the day, whatever they achieve will only be count as, as one. one medal. I think there's need to really look look into that to find a way of uh, modifying it to make it befit the status. So I think it's something that uh, every Nigerian will be looking forward to, especially now that we, are, we want to build a new Super Eagles. For us to build a new Super Eagles, we have to go to the younger players. And where can we go to the younger players? It's from the Flying Eagles. Those days it's from the Golden Eagles to the Flying Eagles, from Flying Eagles to the Green Eagles, as we call them there before changing their name to Super Eagles. So I think this is an opportunity for us to really scout very well, especially in the area of the midfielders that we are seriously lacking a creative midfielder. I think our attention should be here to see those players that we really need to twitch, we really need to give the experience, the exposure that will make them beneficial in the long run for the Super Eagles. So I'm seriously waiting to see what Uganda has to has to show because they are not a name that is uh, recognized when it comes to football. It's only a rugby. But don't be surprised. They, they come prepared and they can do a lot. Focus will be on uh, Senegal and Tunisia. But to me, I think we shouldn't put our focus on only the Senegalese team and the Tunisian team. The other also, we should not underrate them at all. We should approach each match with all the seriousness is determined because in a competition like this, you have to make sure that you win your first match, second match to build the confidence and to instill fear in other teams that are coming to meet you. So our first match should be played as if you are playing the final match. The big one they are talking about Nigerian flying eagles uh, to be at least uh, being led by coach Ladan Boso, where he has released 20 players as we speak right now. You've taken out to Ghana, where they'll be competing against Uganda, South Sudan, Senegal, and Tunisia in their own group B for this competition. African Games, the 13th edition coming up in Ghana, really. Both ways you can say it, <laughs> Africa, African Games in the air, and we are speaking right about it right now on air. Well, quickly, let's talk about the women now. The women team also, they've released their only, but before then let's look at the, type, the story where uh, 13 Africa games Danjuma Pigs, Ohebulem, Oladipo, Gina, 17 others. They also make 20 players there for the African games. We look at the list of those players being invited by coach Chris Danjuma. Well, from goalkeeper, we have Andalin Umbechi, Rachel Unachuku, Faith Omilano. From defender, Shukrat Oladipo, Olucho Hagbulem. Jumoke Alani, Chidima Obuchi, Oluwabume Oladiji, Chidera Okenwa, and for the midfielders, Adoyina, Joy Ibokwe, Chioma Olese, Chinyere Kalu, Olushola Shobowale, for forwards, Mutunayo Ezekiel, Blessing Ope, Chiamaka Okuchuku, Lovet Ede, you have Judith Orca and Delight Unwosu in their group. We have group A and B, where group A, Ghana, Ethiopia, Tanzania, and Uganda. Why group B have Nigeria, Morocco, Senegal, and Cameroon? Someone will say Senegal again because <laughs> we have them both in the male and the female. Well, for Nigeria ladies, the Falconet will be facing Morocco, Senegal, and Cameroon. A very, very tough one. Yeah, a very tough one, and, but I think we have what it takes. Mm. And we have been dominating Africa when it comes to the women football for a very long time. So we are the team to beat. We are the team that everybody wants to make sure that they get a point out of us. Winning us is like winning the, uh, winning the trophy or the tournament to them. So we should be prepared. And, and I'm sure the ladies also, they, they are hungry for success. But that's one good thing about the game of football. They know a lot of um, scouts will be there. A lot of scouts will be there watching them watching them to see oh okay i can invite this to go for a trial and if he or she perform very well they can fit into our feeder team they can fit into our academy so i am very sure all of them they have this at the back of their mind and they are do making the nation proud they also they are hungry for that success that this is an opportunity to showcase the talent that they have so i'm very sure i'm very confident that morocco senegal and cameroon do not be a threat do not be the one to stop us from adding the medal to the medal table that will win at the end of this competition. To let you know that our ladies are actually defending champion for this competition, talking about our girls there, the Falconet, but for the male team, the uh, Flying Eagles, 
for the past 51 years, since 1973, we've been running after African Games uh, trophy, talking about football for men. And something must be done right now because that trophy has eluded Nigeria for 51 years, since 1973. And that's a very a big record that we really need to break right now. Yes, uh, it's a big record that we need to really break. And that um, comes this question that, why have we done it at the what stage? 1996. Mm. Olympic, we won the medal. But and then African game African has been eluding you since 1973. Here, here is the answer. In Africa, both of uh, all the teams, all the nations, we are using the same age. So it's like we are all playing ourselves. We know ourselves. We know ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> if you said, oh, said Adeni is 12 years old, mm. the Cameroonian will come, the Ghanaian too will bring, someone, bring, like, they will bring someone like Adeni that is 12, 12 years, years old. old. <laughs> so far, it's 12, so 12. It's 12, 12. <laughs> so we don't have an issue when it comes to that. But when you go to the world stage, it's different. And if you watch on um, the history of an um, Olympic, or uh, even under 17, under the Junior World Cup, African team have been doing very, very well. But when it comes to the senior team, apart from Morocco, that did exceptional and exceptional well at the last uh, World Cup in Qatar, this is the first time since the history of the senior World Cup that we got to the semi-final. So if you ask ourselves, what do we need to do? What we need to do is to catch these players young. There's no two way about it. So that you can have time to progress, to transit with the team. Look at Messi, look at Ronaldo, look at uh, Di Maria, look at Sergio Aguero, look at all these players that we know. We've known them for more than 15, 20 years. From the junior team, you still see because them Because they use of, of their real age. Exactly. But here, you see Tai Taiwo that will come and play, and the current day is celebrating how many years old. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of this issue in this country that we seriously need to look into. Let our 14 be 14. If you move around Abuja here and you see under 10, under 12 playing, you'll be surprised and amazed that can these boys play the way they are playing? So that is what we need to do. And how can we get it right? We still have to go back to the roots. Where is the route to go back to the secondary school where we used to play the principal's cup in those days? That is where they normally get all these under 17, under 20 to play. Because even now, you can't get under 17 mm. from SS Tilly again. That's the truth. You can hardly get under 17 from secondary school. So that means we have to go back to the drawing board. If you want a future for the Nigerian football, we have to go back to that drawing board and start catching them young as in very, very young. For as far as this competition is concerned, let's see what happens. But we are meeting our mates this time around. So we are not meeting people that are younger than us. So that's why it's been very difficult for us to progress to winning since 1973. That's a long time. A long time ago for the flying eagles running after that particular trophy they've been coveting. But for our lady defending champion, they are far talent. They will make us proud. We are hoping that the two teams will actually win this competition there. Talking about the African Games coming up in Ghana, precisely in Accra. But right now, let's try come back home and talk about our team. Rivers United, they actually qualify for the at least uh, uh, quarterfinals. Uh, we're talking about the uh, CAF Confederation. But the good thing is that they saved Nigeria. Uh, from getting that slot, four slot back, if they had lost that match and out, they, they, they have been cut down to two. But right now, the Minister of Weather and Sport Development, uh, uh, Senator Ewan Enos, is actually charging Rivers United by saying, remain focused. CAF Confederations Cup quarter final clash, remain focused. Whichever team that is coming from USM Olga, from Zamalek, be ready and make sure you dislodge them. If you remember last time, like this, when they were about to play Young Guy FC of Tanzania, a lot of people were directed Young Guy FC and they defeated Rivers United. So this time around, they should not be complacent. Lesson learned. That's the truth. And um, last time we, we were even preparing for the semi final without playing the quarter final. And that's what we are used to in this country. So this time around, I think they should um, approach the match with all seriousness, irrespective of any club that they are meeting. And um, they should try as much as possible to win the, uh, the competition from the first match. Mm. That's the best way. And that's the truth. And they are motivated enough. And they have what it takes. They have the experience on their side now. Unlike the last time, they were like, oh, okay, it has been a very long time before, before they got to this field. But this time around, they had the experience last time. They had the experience at the group stages also. Now they are there. They have to remain focused. Then the good thing is now they've also helped the Nigerian contingent. Help us in the sense that uh, the people that we're representing, the team that we're representing, 
the country, the next competition has increased based on them qualifying to this quarter final. So I think it's a very, it's a very good one. Celebrating Rivers United there by Senator John Ewa Eno there, the Minister of Sport Development for the fact that they were able to make sure the first lot that will have eluded Nigeria is back to uh, Nigeria now, having that calf interclub competitions with four slots for Nigeria. Good one for Rivers United, and hopefully, whichever teams that they are facing in the quarterfinals, they will dislock them, wishing them the best in the quarterfinal of the calf interclub competition called Calf Confederation. There, quickly, we go straight down to UEFA Champions League matches coming up. Tonight, we have uh, to look at those games. Uh, let's look at these matches coming up. Bayern Munich we're facing Lazio. Aggregate wise, Lazio are leading the first leg 1 0. Rest aside that against PSG, against uh, that game where PSG actually scored two goals. And from the way it is, a big one. But Bayern have not been the Bayern they used to be when you look at them domestically. And Lazio is a team you don't underrate. For society against PSG, we know what PSG want to do now. They want to bury the game outrightly over there in Spain. Let's look at it quickly. Okay, and um, for Bayern Munich and Lazio, it's going to be an interesting match. And if you look at the record between the two, the two clubs, and they've met three times, Bayern Munich, they've won twice, and Lazio, they won only one. Once and then, and if you look at last year's history with a German team, they've played a German team um, in the knockout stages four times. They drew two and they lost two, so they are yet to win a knockout stage against any German team. So, and uh, them going to Bayern Munich tonight, they are, they are going either to make history or be to beat Bayern Munich, being the first time they've beat a German team in the knockout stage that will make them to progress. Then Bayern Munich also, uh, they are more like uh, a regular customer when it comes to the round of 16. In fact, the last time that they failed to qualify for the round of 16 was in 2018 when they lost to Liverpool 3-1 and Liverpool eventually won uh, the, the competition as at that time. Since 2018, up to today, they've been qualifying, progressing above round of 16 so it's going to be very tricky and if you look at the last two matches um that's last year at, uh, in their domestic league and Bayern Munich last year lost their last two matches Bayern Munich they drew their last two matches also so domestically both of them are not doing very well but we are talking about Europe the game the tempo the tension will be totally different the fans the supporters do solidly behind Bayern Munich tonight so it's going to be an interesting match to watch and uh, let's see who will win it but to me i think tactics will win it determination and dedication will win it now if you are to talk about the score line now between bayern and lazio okay and um, i'll give it to bayern okay because the aggregate bayern. is saying is favoring lazio first but now if you're going to look at it aggregate wise it means bayern will have two one uh it's uh, it's not how far mm, it's, how it's, well. it's how well you have by uh, last year they are going to the competition with your upper hand but i see bayern Monique progressing to the quarter final at the end of the day you see 3-1 on aggregate score line psg suicide um score line there'll be a there'll be a shortcut tonight um psg did not really be very fantastic mm. so i see society winning tonight's match but psg will we'll go through well just to talk about the uefa champions league they are coming for larry peters there psg suicide Bayern Munich Lazio 1 0 first leg. Second, uh, the uh, second leg is coming up. And for PSG 2 0 first leg. And let's see what happens tonight. It's going to be a shocker over there in the Champions League. And still talking about UEFA, they came up with a new format. <laughs> let's look at that. UEFA, uh, cham uh, rather, UEFA uh, Champions League new format set to start next season 2024 2025 where all the UEFA club competitions be having a different uh, categories of uh, format. Let's look at it. Uh, we quickly look at that particular summary of it before we look at the video. Let's look at uh, uh, UEFA competitions, uh, new format summary. New format summary before we actually look at the video there. The current two teams, group stage format. We transition to a 36-team league phase from 2024. Each team will face eight different opponents drawn from the four part with a total of eight games. Team 1 to 8, we qualify for the round of 16. Team 9 to 24, we compete in a knockout playoff round. Uh, teams ranked 25th to 26th will be eliminated from all competitions with immediate effect. Total games played increased from 125 to 189. League games, uh, league face matches play over 10 week period. Clubs from the same country will be able to play against each other during the early knockout stages. Within the current format, 
teams from the same league cannot face each other on the quarter finals. The Europa League will follow the exact system as UCL with eight games in the new league phase. In the Conference League, teams will only play six matches during that phase. Quickly, let's look at this explanation coming from UEFA <coughs> quickly before our lips as we actually use justice to it and then we wrap it up. Let's have that particular clip. A big one there for let to let you have a feel of that VFR new format coming up 2024, 2025. <laughs> That's very technical. <laughs> uh, uh... It's very interesting and to to see, but what he didn't mention during the video is to let us know that football is what is business. It's business, as we always say. As we always say, and that is what they are doing right now. Now, and before now, <clears throat> we have 32 teams. Your team must sign off. So I think it's a very good way uh, to to go about it. It's uh, creative. It's innovative. It's something that, just like they said in the video, and you, the battle starts from the day one. Mm. Every point, every goal, every yellow card, every red card, every discipline, it matters most. I can't wait to see it. Well, talking about UEFA Champions and also Europa Cup, Europa Conference League, having new former nurses, big one out there, big business. And I'm sure this was done to also <laughs> find a way to counter the Super League that could have been a big problem to them. At least this format, uh, something new and exciting is coming to football. A big one out there with a lot of people <coughs> in the studio. Spot update on Trust TV. Thank you so much for coming. Thanks so much, Adeni. It's my pleasure being here. I'm Adeni Ajisha. Sport is always business and fitness. Thanks for watching.